In this corner of the room, I felt the need for a pair of tall structures to flank the bridge where the track disappears into staging. On the rear of the layout, I have the elevator tower for National Widget, and on the front, I thought a grain elevator would be a good choice. In this location, I'm thinking that this company receives the occasional boxcar full of grain, and then it ships out you know, bagged grains and fertilizers by truck. I prefer concrete elevators to the old wooden style because the round tubes give a nice contrast to the square buildings that would otherwise monopolize the scene. Having said that, I like the shape of the wooden elevators at the top. And originally, I built this mock-up. Maybe there's some examples of concrete elevators that have the old-fashioned style headhouse. Alas, I could not find a single prototype photograph. So I got rid of this and I built a basic box headhouse as is normal with uh, concrete elevators. So anyway, there's the mock-up. Now it's time to turn this into a finished structure. When I first made the decision to build a concrete elevator, I was a little concerned that my building might be a little too small to justify the expense of the concrete construction. So I went online and I looked for pictures of the real thing. And if you see on the left here, here is a really tiny four tube elevator. It's only about two stories high with a very short head house. And on the right, there's this really tall elevator, but it's only two tubes. Here's another view of the other side of it. Now this one is obviously a collection elevator as evidenced by the dump shed over the road and the bulk loading tube on the rail side. And this is the exact opposite to what I'm doing. But at least it proves that small concrete elevators were built. So I don't have to worry that mine is too small to be believable. Here's some more pictures that I used for inspiration. The one on the right here has an interesting shaped head house, although I didn't go with that. But if you look closely, you'll see the round tube and the rectangular bit in the middle sticks out just a little bit. And I thought that'd be really interesting. Most of them have the flat concrete panels blending in smoothly, like this one over here. This one on the left I found particularly interesting because the dust collection systems are really awesome here. And although this one is a, is a slightly larger insulation, I can get rid of this half altogether. And what I'm left with is about the right size. So I've got this regular cyclone vent here with a tube to some kind of apparatus here and this extra little cylinder here. Um, I think that's all really interesting. Well, I've got the main silos cut along with the top and bottom. Rather than go with just plain tubes, I was thinking that I needed to be able to get access to the inside of the, of the elevator so that I can install the windows. That's why I cut the tubes back that was a real pain to do. I didn't have access to my table saw at the moment, so I just used a regular skill saw. I clamped a two by four in my bench vise, and then attached this to it lightly with G-clamps, and then just cut two slots. Of course, when I had a closer look at the windows I planned to use, I found they installed from the outside, so I didn't need to go through all that. I could have just left the tubes whole. Anyway, having gone to the trouble of making the inside accessible, I decided to cut a hole big enough for my hand just in case I need to get into there for any other reason. Not quite sure how I'm going to assemble this. I can't use styrene cement because the tubes are PVC. The solvent doesn't join them very well. What I think I will do is attach the lid, let it set up for a couple of hours, then come down, turn it over. Good morning, everybody. Sorry about the last clip cutting out so suddenly, the batteries failed. Anyway, I've got it plugged in again this morning. Last night I did get the first few components assembled. As I said, I wasn't able to use the styrene cement for the PVC tube, so I used this uh, goop. 
it works quite well. I have had problems with it distorting thin styrene. There's no sign of distortion here with the 80 thou and if it does distort in the next couple of weeks before I finish the structure I will just either fill it or put a another piece on top. I needed to make sure that the tubes were parallel and I don't have a regular caliper so I came up with this method. I put my yardstick along here in two squares. Anyway the next task is to get the flat sections in. I saw a really cool picture of a prototype where the tubes come round and then the centre bit sticks out just a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I might put it flat at one side and stick it out at the other just to be a bit, little bit different. Anyway, that's the next step. I've also got to figure out where I'm going to put window openings because some of those that I see have a few windows in the flat area. Now I think I want to put a few in just because it adds interest. Cutting out window openings in 80,000 styrene can be a bit of a bear, but I've found a way that works fairly well. I start by drilling a small hole in each corner, making sure that I stay well within the window opening, and then I just cut to join the holes freehand from both sides, and then force out the middle openings. Once most material is gone, it's a lot easier to come back with a straight edge and finish them off. So the difference being now is that when I run the knife along the straight edge, the strip of styrene that I'm cutting off has somewhere to go. When I finish going around the window openings the second time with the knife, then I just need to clean up the corners and get the edges straight with a square file. I'm only doing this very lightly, being careful not to enlarge the openings too much. Sometimes I have to take the knife to the corners again because the square file unfortunately has radius corners. Now it's time to get the window that I'm going to use and give it a test fit. And that's still a little snug. I think it's wide enough, but I've got to make it higher. And that window now fits perfectly. I'm just going to go away and do the rest and I'll be right back. Well, I have the panel for the flat side done. Just a piece of 80,000 styrene. I had to chamfer the back edges with a large mill file. I got it too wide the first time round, had to trim it a little bit narrower, but now it fits just about right. If I get my straight edge and put it across the top, it just touches both tubes while staying flush with the flat panel all the way. And once I've glued that in place, I will just fill those grooves there. And, and then file it flat afterwards. But there are a few things I need to do before I attach this. I still have to prep the backs of the window openings because as I discovered earlier the windows are stored from the outside so I'm going to put a reveal to push it against. Also I think I want to attach the other side first because this is easy to do from the outside of the building whereas the other one I might want to be able to reach in. This side is a little more complicated. The flat piece is narrower with side pieces like that. I haven't cut these to size yet. But that's the next thing I need to get on with. Well, I've prepped the window openings. It's just a case of putting some styrene around inside on the back. It really doesn't matter what thickness it is just need a little bit of a ledge to glue the window frame to. I've done the same with this side. This one, I put two strips down there. I filed angles on the back to fit snugly against the round tubes. I started off by leaving it a little bit proud on the front so I could file it down and get a nice corner. 
that will fit in there get that glued it wants to pop up and up in the middle a little bit but that's okay I'll just make sure I wait it I think I'm ready to install that right now once that's had time to set up for a little bit and it's self-supporting then I'll turn the whole building over and do the other side I think that's gonna look quite good well I have my front and back side panels glued on <coughs> Here's the, the interesting side, which unfortunately is away from the viewer, and the plain side. The rubber cement is set out fairly well. I've still got these grooves in here, and I need to fill those. I'm going to try using my thick solvent, which basically is styrene scraps dissolved in solvent. And I'm just going to fill it in there. Well, I've had another go at filling these grooves. This time I used some Tamiya putty. It seems to work quite well. I wasn't sure if it was going to stick well to the PVC. So on this side that was really bad, I cut away all the old filler and I super glued a strip of 10,000 styrene and then just filled it up against both sides of it. This side that was nearly okay the first time round. I just went over it with the putty. And it's not perfect, but I think it's close enough that I can fix it with paint. I mean, I can still just about fill ridges. And I think the main problem there is that the putty is a lot softer than the styrene. So as I sand it, the, the putty gets sanded more than the styrene, leaving a slight ridge but it's only very slight. And as I say, I'm, I'm hoping that I can paint it out. Anyway, that is the main silo completed. Time to get on with the annexes.